Hey everybody, we're here with Zach Gerber in his backyard at his quarter and uh, I thought it'd be cool to talk about his bike with him because he's got a bunch of 3D printed stuff on it that he made himself and there's one concept on here that I can see being like in the future of BMX, that fifth peg, but we'll get there. So uh, I guess, me tell me about your bike. I'm running? Yeah, just... Uh, start with the frame. I'm still on my standard. This is like my signature that Rick made me. Dude, it's seriously been like three years now. The last time we were filming the last Us Then video and we're almost done with the second one. <laughs> Which should be out, I think, we're gonna be done filming here in like the next month. So I know everyone's just trying to get their last clips. Spray painted, flat, brown, <laughs> rattle can. My bike's beat to hell. Up front, I'm running the Animal, uh, was it foursome handlebars, they're nine inch tall. Animal top load stem. I got the Animal forks. Got the front wheels, the Animal. Everything's Animal, home front end, Animal, all right? Only thing that's not is this like 3D printed headset cap and these bar ends, which are 3D printed as well. Which grips are those? Uh, ODIs, you're right, ODI grips, yep. Soft uh, ones? No, just traditional ones. I've just had them forever. They're even like ripped and stuff, but I still run flanges. That's how you know I'm old. I got, <laughs> I got no my hands are. I can't do that bend the bar grab stuff. I like hit that and like my OCD is like, nope, it's gotta be right. Animal seat, what is that? The cush, right? Animal post, cranks are animal, sprockets animal. That's a new one too, the USA made stuff. Chain I'm running is that like shadow supreme chain, super gnarly one. The pedals, these are my own design. Grind side pedals, uh, 3D printed. The back wheel, I'm running an Alien Nation free coaster. Got the animal rim, animal pegs, and the part that we wanted to talk about was the fifth peg, which is my, uh, whatever, it's the bottom bracket guard. Obviously, people doing like the crank arm slides, crank arm pedal feeble, Garrett Burns grind, whatever you want to call it. Um, beats the hell out of your BB. And I do those occasionally. I'm not like, you know, the most up-to-date rider. <laughs> but like I do a few of those and I thought, man, that was a pretty sick idea. So this is like a, a C-clamp, essentially around your bottom bracket and it protects it. And I've done, I mean, I've had it on and been riding with it and doing the grinds, like intentionally seeking out doing those grinds just to test it. And it works great because one of the major reasons is, is this is a standard frame, so it's just a solid cylinder across. So it sits right on top of that. So any of the force just transfers into the steel. Um, I haven't had any issues with this particular version. I'm working with a bunch of homies because this is still kind of like in beta. Um, working with a bunch of homies out on the west coast, going to get them some uh, files, make it wider so it fits their setup. Maybe change a few things because you have to make it so you can still tighten your cranks. So what you do is you take your internal, you remember those spacers in between your bearings? Took an extra one of those and cut five and six millimeter spacers out of it. That sits in here, so when you tighten it, it's on the steel, and that's the outer diameter of that steel insert and it floats that's why it kind of just you know it's got a little play in there but you can still crank do kick flips and everything so i don't know it's pretty sick so yeah that is a cool concept how how deep into it are you would you, would you say that's like a what could be a final this one is something that's uh not a necessary like final because the major issue we're running into is there's no industry standard when it comes to bottom bracket widths this one's like uh, either it's like 69 or 70 millimeters and then other friends have measured theirs and they're like 72 and when you're talking these sort of tolerances a few millimeters is like it's a big deal so trying to figure out something that fits a lot we might have to do something that like is by size you know a downloadable this one's 69 68 69 6, 71 you just have to measure your own stuff and print one um, obviously there's different bearing sizes, 24 mil, 22 and 19. So this is for a 22 millimeter. So there's a bunch of different variating factors. We could do something to that instead of it having to be that steel insert, we could just print a piece. Now that you could print nylon, print a nylon bushing, and it just, different ones fit different sizes. You can make it so that inside pieces fits uh, a 24 millimeter, but then you print out different nylon bushings that's for your 
whether it's 24, 22, or 19 millimeter spindle. So there's all sorts of solutions. We're still just like, I'm talking with friends, trying to come up with solutions and make something that is needed. You know what I mean? Right now, this is needed. And I don't know how you would make this without 3D printing. Like, I don't know how you would inject, it's a seed. You know what I mean? With inside radius and stuff, like it's, it's a fairly complex thing. I don't know how, maybe 3D CNC could do that. Maybe, have you seen the first design that I did? It's only like one side. That would be pretty sick to do as like a, an aluminum piece or a steel piece that you lay it out. That would be pretty sick if you wanted to do like a metal concept. But as far as like a full plastic one, I think 3D printing is the way to go, at least for now. And I made this too, so it's reversible. So if you grind through one side, you can just turn it all the way around and run the other side. So yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So you've been super into 3D printing, needless to say. How you feel it's going well and you're you're stoked on it? Yeah, it's oh, well, I'm a fan of like obviously you've seen all this stuff. Like I'm a big DIY fan. Like even things that I do for work is it's like anything. If it pays, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, you need equipment, you want to weld, you need plumbing, you need roof, you need whatever like i just working on cars like even after you leave i got a job putting in new headlights in a car you know what i mean they're just waiting on me to be like yeah i'm done come over just i i love learning and doing things and this is just a something that like this winter i was like either gonna buy like one of the new playstations or a 3d printer and i got a 3d printer and just was like this is so sick and just just went hard in the paint <laughs> you know what i mean like learning everything i could learning how to do cad like it was something i haven't done since like when i was in high school we had like in shop class how to do cad and i haven't done it since like seriously since grade school like eighth grade in high school a little bit so it was sick relearning all that shout out to youtube for having literally everything and then just being able to share ideas and yeah i don't know I've done it. It's pretty awesome to see. I mean, you've got parts on your bike that you made and not a there's people out there who can say that, but not a giant group. It's a small group right now, but the advent of 3D printing at home could change that. Yeah, I think it's just something too like whether you, if you have access to it at home, like you purchase one yourself or if you have access to it say you're in high school, like that's and then the files are available too. You can edit them, you can put your group's name, you can put, you know what I mean? That's what I think is cool, is the personalization of products because that's one of the major things that BMX is. It's an expression of who we are. So obviously our bike is the same thing. It's an expression of who we are as a person. So being able to put like your group's name on there, like us, them, you know what I mean? That's my group of friends, that's our video project and being able to put that on there, that makes it that much more personal to me. And I know there's a lot of people who feel exactly the same way. So, and what's cool is too, if you got that one nerdy homie, like we all did, who was like the dude who's always on the video camera. He wasn't the best rider, but always had a camera. Don't even matter time till he's got the camera. You know what I mean? And he's got a 3D printer, so he's making parts for the homies. Like dudes, I think that'd be such a, a sick, I think that's the future. I really do think it's the future. Like maybe not, yeah, I'm probably a little bit of hyperbolic, a little big picture, but I can definitely see this coming more at home. Obviously, we're experiencing it with the shortages. Like, this is something that, as long as you have filament, you know what I mean? You can make all sorts of stuff. I think it's telling that when it comes to the rest of your bike, you're like, these are, my these are the parts, but then it comes to the, the 3D printed stuff you made, it's like... Uh, you're just so stoked about it. And I'm, st I'm stoked to hear about that. Uh, that being said, what tires you got on there? Oh yeah, you're right. I got the Animal GLH tires on there. I used to have the ASM, but I just took it off recently. Rocking four hub guards, I see. Yep, I got uh, all st the steel ones, of course. I have tried doing 3D printed hub guards, but they're tough. You have a lot of limited room and tolerances between like your fork tubes and obviously that's a high area of impact. Um, something in the works, obviously, maybe better filament. Um, done a few different designs too of like thicker 
guards because there's potential like you could get rid of like your uh, uh, all that metal hardware and just put a full full big chunk of inch thick plastic <laughs> you know what I mean there's a lot of ideas still to go around and, and things that you can create and come up with and prototype so yeah this is essentially what I do I work I ride when I can and at night I should be going to sleep but I'm like sitting on the computer drawing stuff and getting pissed off because my computer's too slow <laughs> Uh, are you particular about geometry of anything on your bike at all? No, I, you know, uh, the most modernized part I have are the new forks because forever I just ran traditional millimeter offset and these are like the steeper, like 15. And it is pretty sick because it makes it shorter. You know what I mean? So I'm running like the 27.5 top tube, the standover is like nine and a half, back end's 13. Um, but yeah, and 75 degree head tube going with the, the steeper rake fork so it's pretty sick because it's like snappy feeling but I don't want it to be like you see some people's bikes that are so like super short back end and like I don't want it too small you know what I mean because then like I don't know that's just me and the way I ride so everyone has preferences but that's just mine <laughs> awesome uh anything else about your bike that is unique to your bike or you my rear axle is always bent. <laughs> no matter what, it's always bent. This is brand new. Albie's legitimately just sent this to me. I went out and rode by myself and was trying to film one clip that I never got, and I bent my axle that bad. <laughs> so if people wanted to find your info, I will have the Thingiverse. Is that the main? That's the one that's good one? That's the main thing that, yeah. That's where all my uh, designs are and... It's also like on my Instagram, I have it as like my URL, you know, I can put a mm -hmm. website on there. So yeah, if people want to check it out, just trying to spread the signal. Heck yeah. Any, any shout outs, anything of that nature? Uh, yeah. Shout out to all the people who've, uh, like animal bikes and Howard always helping me with pike parts. Um, shout out to standard for making the best goddamn frame I've ever ridden. Like the fact that this is still the same frame from the last video is unreal to me and shout out to the guide at control pew and r.i.p j stark <laughs> thanks dude thank you